Okay, on the PolyEnd synth, you can create chord packs of your own, and it's quite simple to do, and I'm going to show you how to do that today in this video. So, I'm going to initialize this patch. I'm going to use the magenta synth. I'm going to press the button here, go to grid, and we've got notes set for all the synths. Let's change the magenta synth to chord pack. Notice as we come away from note, it goes straight to this menu. Scroll down to chord pack and let go. And it always defaults to this airy chord pack. It gives us these different chords. That's not what we want. We want to create our own chord pack. So I'm going to go to chord edit, this button down here. Press save load and in it. So now I've got the same chord on eight pads. I've got actually a C major chord on all eight pads and obviously we don't want that. First thing I'm going to do is change the pack size down here to seven so that once I've played the seven the next one up is an octave and it will just repeat octave by octave. I'm going to leave the follow scale size as it is. We'll leave the chord type to major but we'll change the spread. Now that spread, spread from, spread to, that's how big a spread it is between the lowest note and the highest note in the chord. At the moment, it's a fairly tight harmony. So we're doing this first pad here. As I press different pads, this will change because they're all the same at the moment because they're all set to the same chord. So we're editing this first pad here. So let's bring the spread two up. Now, you'll only see notes that are in the chord of C major. On the outside of the brackets you'll only see C's, E's and G's but inside the brackets you'll see the notes going up chromatically. So let's just take our spread two note up and it will go up eventually, and there it is now. You can hear it's a bigger spread because the top note is E. Set that up to the next note, which should be G. So the lowest note is still the same, still that C3, but the highest note is getting further and further away. So the spread is, is wider, you see? So if I bring that down again, let's say, I'll leave it on G3, it doesn't really matter what the note in the bracket is set to, as long as the one on the left doesn't change, but that's a nice tight harmony. Right, so the lowest note is C3 at the moment. Let's take that down a bit, and eventually the one on the right hand changes. Now, we've got a much lower inversion of that chord. That's not what I want, so I'm gonna bring this back up again. Uh, bring it up to C3, shall we? And we'll bring this one up here, the next one up. quite a nice spread there okay right let's go to the second pad and that's the same as the the first one was let's change this to D minor shall we so we'll change the chord type to minor it's back one I think there it is now it's got a dash in the brackets because it's conflicting with the grid scale you see if I take that back to major you'll see there's no dash in the brackets minor and it's different to the grid scale you see I think you can keep it locked with the scale lock. I'm not going to get over complicated with this. I'm going to change my chord root to D. So I want D minor. Now I've already, I've already got it. There's C major, there's D minor, but it's a bit low pitched. And I can't bring the lowest note up because the highest note, the spread two note, is too close to it. So if I bring this up for the next available note, which is F, now it's bit nicer and a bit more of a spread. Right, I've gone a long way up, gone too far up now. Let's take it down to F5. Now bringing the higher one up, the lower one won't come up because it's making that spread higher and higher and higher. See? So the low one won't move away from that D3. So we'll bring this down 
So the top note is F4, okay? Let's come up a little bit more. You just have to experiment a bit. And I could bring this one down. And that has come down with it, see? So, so it's quite nice. I've got C major there and I've got D minor there. Let's do another one. Let's make this, I don't know, A7. So chord root A. A3, we'll make it a dominant seventh. Scroll through till we get Dom7, there we are. Dash in the brackets, because it's conflicting with the grid scale. It's a bit high pitched, isn't it? Let's bring this one down. Now, because we said it's A dominant seventh, we're only gonna get notes in that chord, and those notes are A's, C sharps, E's, and G's. So let's make the spread from an A note, shall we? Bring this down to A, A2. A bit low, let's bring it up if we can. A3. It's quite nice as it is, and the top note is G4, so it's going from A3 to G4. Bring that up a bit to the next available note, which is C sharp five. It's quite nice, isn't it? So in this chord pack that I've made, I won't go on and do the others, but I've got three chords. I've got C major, D minor, and A dominant seven, A seven. And then if I wanted to keep that, I go to save load, save, type in something suitable, and then it's saved. And it's not saved to the scene, it is saved to the SD card. So if you want to call this call pack up in another scene, you have to manually load it in. I'll show you that. So at the moment it's saying call pack, the called pack name is in it because it's initialized and I haven't saved it. So let's just load in one I did a bit earlier. Call pack one, very imaginative. Now in this one, I did four calls. If we go to called edit, you'll see I've got C minor seventh, D minor seventh, E minor, and I did a G minor sixth there. And then the others were in uh, another call pack that I edited. A good one to start editing with, if you want a bit of a hint, is RNZ underscore HO. That's a good one. This is how it repeats in the up octave. Every time you get to a, a lit pad, that new octave is starting. The call packs are, by the way, saved on the SD card with a dot palette extension. So if you want to find those, uh, you'll see those on the SD card, but you'll only see those, of course, if you've uh, saved the contents of your card to your computer or you put your card in the computer. So there we are, just a very quick video about understanding the chord packs. They're great, aren't they? Because you can create a chord sequence on one of the synths and then you can make the other notes in the other synths follow those chords. So that's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching and you'll see me in the next one.